What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs gotta eat. I hope this shit ain't too loud for y'all. Let me turn it down a bit. We're not gonna turn this episode down a bit though, because we got a lot going on today. We got a lot going on with this camera here. This is a new. This actually is not a new lens. This is a, just a lens that I haven't chosen to use yet with y'all. Not in my fantasy videos, because it kind of creeps me out a little bit. It's like so focused on me. Now I know a lot of videos on YouTube are like super entranced by the fact that like they like to be focused on and everything in the background gets blurry and shit. But it like creeps me out, man. Because then you guys don't know what the fuck's going on in the background. Shit might just like pop out of you. You know, I'm looking out for you. This is a self this is a selfless thing realistically. Let me know how you guys like the camera though. This is obviously a more cinematic look for y'all. If you're on the podcast and you have no idea what you, the fuck I'm talking about, I, I apologize, but you can hop over to YouTube, which you should do and subscribe anyways. And if you are on YouTube, you want to go subscribe to the podcast, we can use a little numbers lift over there if I if, if you know what I'm saying, 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 saying. So let me know what you think about the camera. Do you like the blurry background? Would you rather a little more widescreen so you could see what's going on in the background? I feel like it's more personal when you could see what's happening in the background. Like you'd see my dirty underwear on the chair back there. You could see some leftover cocaine on the top over there. Well, I appreciate it either way because I know none of you guys are actually going to help me out there. Cool. Good talk. We've broken down the quarterback free agents, the tight end free agents, and the running back free agents. If you missed any of those episodes, I will link them down in the description. I suggest you go check them out prior to doing the wide receiver one. The entire group is loaded, man. Adam Schefter tweeted out something a couple days ago where he'd said he put the over under on teams with new quarterbacks next year at eight fucking I'm going to pause. I'm going to run that bike real quick. Eight fucking teen teams might be with a new quarterback next year. So free agency is going to be crazy. The the draft is going to be crazy. We don't even have a damn combine, which stinks. Wide receivers are on, on another level, which is what we're going to talk about today. I mean, they are thick from the top. We're talking Eddie Lacy all the way down to the bottom. Kim Kardashian, you, you made one perfect human being it would be eddie lacy on top kim kardashian on the bottom god damn that's what this wide receiver class is about this free agent wide receiver class i should say we're going to dip into rookie stuff starting next week we're going to talk some dynasty stuff we're going to talk some of the rookie class upcoming so i know we do a lot of season long but stay ready stay ready i st fucking stay strapped on the dynasty rookie stuff i've been diving into the running backs and stuff i've been tweeting out some stuff so make sure that if you're not following me on twitter you do that at nick underscore b d g e Get some rookie analytics statistics. Big facts only thrown at your face hole. 2021 wide receiver free agent class. Break down where they might go. Who's on the list. Who might be on the come up because these guys are on the list and where they might be going, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. As always, what we got to do first is tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. Again, this wide receiver group, one of the most talented, most talented groups of free agents that we've seen in a long, long time. It's also another really deep wide receiver class in the NFL draft. So we saw this, you know, we've seen this trend of just passing becoming more and more and more of a thing in the NFL. Don't see that going anywhere anytime soon. The NFL had the single most touchdowns per game in 2020 since the shot clock era that's what we're gonna call it because i don't know that shit like 1942 they had more touchdowns or some shit but like were people really alive in 1942 does anyone have proof that human civilization started before 1942 no therefore the most touchdowns were scored in 2020 therefore everybody's gonna regress don't draft nobody next year okay except some of these damn wide receivers we look at some of the teams that need wide receivers we look at miami we look at philadelphia we look at detroit now detroit's got that early pick i think they're number seven overall if i'm not mistaken but now without stafford because he's gonna be on the move they might be looking for quarterback there they might be looking to package that deal to move up to take one of the top three four quarterbacks in the draft so they, they might not be taking one of the wide receivers but they are going to be wide receiver needy or a lot of these teams will be wide receiver needy because they got some of the free agents on this list that are going to be gone so we look at Detroit. They got Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay, both free agents this offseason. New England, of course, they are a fucking everlasting black hole of needing wide receivers on their team. You got the Jets because they got Brashad Perriman going to free agency. I would say they could probably stick around with what they got for another year, but they're a little bit needy. I wouldn't be surprised if they took a wide receiver or took a stab at a wide receiver in free agency. You got Baltimore. You got Las Vegas because Aguilar is a free agent. You got the Washington football team. We got the New York Giants. We got Green Bay. We got Chicago because A-Rob is a free agent. And that's who I would probably classify as teams with the most need at the wide receiver position. It's almost easier to say the teams that don't need a wide receiver at this point, but we're going to throw this chart up on the screen for y'all. And this is not everybody that's 
a wide receiver free agent this year. Of course, there are going to be another like 60 dudes that are off their contract, out of a job, working at Home Depot, fucking on Twitch, streaming fucking whatever you people stream on Twitch. But here are the top guys that I think are either interesting from a fantasy perspective or... Yeah, literally just fucking that because it's a fantasy football show. So interesting from a fantasy perspective. You see a long-ass list. I don't even know if you could see it on the screen because YouTube is horizontal and this list is not horizontal. But starting from the top down, we've got Allen Robinson. We've also got the age and we've got the type of free agent that they are. We've got Allen Robinson. We've got Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay, Juju Smith-Schuster, Will Fuller, Curtis Samuel, Antonio Brown, Corey Davis, Marvin Jones, T.Y. Hilton, A.J. Green, Nelson Aguilar, Sammy Watkins, Tim Patrick, and John Ross, who probably almost definitely don't deserve to be on that list but fuck it we're gonna do you one time john ross because you're 25 and young you're a young man and you deserve a second chance because that's what america is all about and that list is in no particular order i probably tried to rank them at the start in terms of like guys that i like most then i got to probably will fuller and i was just like fuck this noise let's just do the analysis on the list we start off with Allen robinson he can be franchised by the bears but everything that happened last year he wanted the extension if you're Allen robinson you're wasting your prime away there and you want the fuck out he doesn't always get the last say so again the bears could slap the franchise tag on him but it looks more and more like there's a possibility there's a possibility that Mr. Bissy comes back and is under center and under no fucking circumstances will Allen Robbins step bike onto the field if Mr. Trubisky's under center there were rumors there were reports coming out this week that Chicago is supposed to be pretty pretty active in the quarterback market this offseason so we could see a change there regardless man it just seems like his time in Chicago is done it, it's kind of run it's it's run its route there he's run his final routes there and he should be elsewhere by the start of the season. I mean, this man could literally spin a globe, fucking put his finger on it, and wherever it lands probably has a more accurate quarterback than the one that he's been playing with. So let's pray that Allen Robinson, the elite top five wide receiver, if he lands anywhere outside of what the fuck he's been playing with thus far, will be. I, I think a team like the Giants probably makes the most sense, though. We've heard, I mean, they're going to be going after a wide receiver hard. We'll have to see, you know, it's going to be interesting because they're, they're at the 11th spot in the NFL draft, and you have teams like Miami, you have teams like Philadelphia, you have teams like Detroit, who we don't know if they're going to go wide receiver heavy. But if you're sitting there at 11 for the Giants, you know, you're looking at wide receivers like Jamar Chase, you're looking at Devonta Smith, who probably don't last there. So then you have to ask yourself, like, do we go real hard in free agency? Because we're probably not going to get one of these guys that drops all the way down there. You can get a Jalen Waddle, but like you probably want, you want a possession number one receiver because right now they got nine for 42 Sterling Shepard over there, great role player, whatever. Darius Slayton has a nice big game once every four games once a month is nice and probably more indicative of Daniel Jones not hitting him accurately down the field we have those two guys we have Golden Tate who sort of like Allen Robinson probably needs to get the fuck out of the situation he's in because that did not end nicely there so they need a real wide receiver possession guy on the outside Allen Robinson makes a lot of sense so you've got two guys that might make a little bit of a shift in the fantasy sphere if Allen Robinson is gone you've got the really exciting rookie Dar Darnell Mooney who we watched get overthrown time and time and time and time again leaving 17 point fantasy plays on the field pretty much every red zone weekly he's a talented dude he's a talented dude I, I don't think like his production is really going to be much different with Allen Robinson gone or there I think it's much more indicative of what happens at the quarterback position so if they can bring in an accurate quarterback like Darnell Mooney is going to be a really really popular breakout candidate so he's ab absolutely someone that you want to hold on to in dynasty Anthony Miller I mean, I feel like we've kind of seen what he is at this point. The ceiling is not really there. He's giving you weekly ceiling sometimes, but I'd hold on to Anthony Miller too. He's not anyone that I'm looking to sell or buy. Maybe I'd buy on Anthony Miller because his target, I guess, will probably go up a little bit, but they'll probably address the wide receiver position in free agency at this point. Chris Godwin. I actually think this is probably a really good chance that Tampa Bay franchises Chris Godwin. It was a down year for Godwin as a whole, considering like he was going late second round, early third round in fantasy. But this was just a very funky year altogether, right? They add Antonio Brown in the middle of the season. We've got Tom Brady coming in his first year under Bruce Arians. So a whole new quarterback, this new system. Again, AB coming in. We had Chris Godwin like hurt for most of the year. We also had Mike Evans in and out of the lineup. So like we never really got them to sit down and click as, as one unit, one team, one dream. Dream, but we've kind of seen it over the last few weeks and we've seen Brady and Godwin have a nice little link up there and I think we've seen what's to come over the second half of the season now he finished with 84 targets 65 catches 840 yards seven touchdowns if you look at that over a 16 game pace 112 targets 87 catches 1112 yards and 9.3 touchdowns which again is not what we expected but it's not terrible like he could definitely 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 build on that especially if Antonio Brown is out of lineup we also added Rob Gronkowski to the equation. So Gronk and Antonio Brown are both free agents. I do think Gronk resigns if Brady resigns, which makes 
an interesting question with Antonio Brown. Do they sign him like to, to a two-year deal? I'm sure they can move around some cap budget for it because if Brady's back, he's probably going to be like pushing for Brown to come back. If Brown doesn't come back though, I think this is, is really, really, really good, obviously for Chris Godwin. I think they could franchise Godwin. I think they could re-sign Gronk to another one-year deal and let him and Brady kind of run out on top. But again, it all does come back to what happens with Tom Brady. If they win the Super Bowl this year, maybe he just trots out. Maybe he runs a bike and say, fuck it, we're going to start a whole ass dynasty with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as well. A lot of outcomes here, but Chris Godwin is obviously really young turns 25 at the end of February so he's in the prime prime of his career he's a fantastic receiver he's like a juiced up athletic version of Juju Smith-Schuster at this point I think the Bucks should franchise him and then figure all that financial shit out next offseason if that's the case he'll be able to uh, run a bike as a high-end wide receiver too with some upside but again moving parts Gronk Antonio Brown see what happens with them if those guys are gone Godwin I think is a really really nice bet to have a a good bounce back candidate for wide receiver one numbers in 2021 then we have Juju Smith-Schuster still wildly young with a couple great seasons under his belt I just don't think personally that Juju's that great of a receiver I mean he's good branding for the team he's going to be good popular he's going to put asses in seats if asses were allowed in seats at the time but this is something that we talked about a lot last offseason just coming from a very personal perspective not mine per se but looking at Juju as a person who he is it's becoming more and more and more and more apparent that he's kind of falling in love with the celebrity aspect of who he is the social media branding aspect of who he is and I don't judge him for that man it's a cool spot to be in it's probably very exciting to be a 22 25 year old kid getting a lot of clout getting a lot of fame getting a lot of notoriety in today's world because a lot of the shit you do kind of goes viral and it opens up all sorts of doors for you it's not you're not just put in a box as a football player anymore Juju's found a path as as a celebrity outside and he's doing a lot of things in the community and doing a lot of things in the gaming world and all this kind of shit but what that does is it takes away from the focus that you can put onto football right like I've talked about this in a lot of my videos like I don't I don't put out five fantasy six fantasy football videos a day anymore i got other dudes on my channel helping me out and doing a lot of the back end work my focus is not primarily on what i started originally with this channel juju you could see some of his focus is not necessarily in football anymore anymore and it's kind of showing itself on the field and you're seeing all these random things with the tiktok kind of coming out and being a fucking problem for him and this was something that i feel like you could see a while ago it's a plus in real life but it's not a plus because we're talking about fantasy football right now he's a slot wide receiver and rarely do we see him go outside and play that alpha role right that was a mistake i made looking at juju after antonio brown left i was like yeah he was good enough at a young wide receiver that i just am i'm not even gonna fight this narrative we're just gonna throw him in as a high-end wide receiver one because he did it at such a young age prove that he's not going to be an alpha and he can't play that alpha role now you have deontay johnson you have chase claypool who are seemingly the future of the wide receiver position in Pittsburgh I see very 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 little reason that Juju will be this I mean the report started last offseason the report started with Juju probably not being a Pittsburgh Steeler in this upcoming season last summer I would be very surprised if he was back as a Steeler in my opinion he would have to land in the absolute perfect 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 spot for his value to go up so if you could still sell Juju for like very high value based on the name price or based on like people expecting him to go to best case scenario free agency now is probably a good time there have been reports of him possibly looking at like the Jets which I would hate for obvious reasons but also landing in NYC kind of goes back to those off-field ambitions that he has he probably wants to be in a big market city somewhere where he can strut his shit everywhere okay and New York City makes a lot of sense the Jets got some cap space and they could probably use another wide receiver out there if they want to develop Darnold or if they do go with a uh, a rookie quarterback in the draft the only landing spot I see where Juju's value doesn't take a big hit is Green Bay because he could be what Randall Cobb was to Jordy Nelson with Aaron Rodgers like in 2014 you remember that combo do you remember when Aaron Rodgers was routinely spitting out top 15 wide receiver twos in fantasy he had the alpha and Jordy Nelson and then whoever the fuck was the slot guy or the number two or whoever whatever the case may be that guy was eating too so if Juju goes over to Green Bay this offseason right they're definitely in the market for a wide receiver too Juju's better than Randall Cobb was when he was posting those big numbers and Jordy was posting Devontae Adams type numbers so Devontae Adams still going to eat he's going to do his thing take the number one coverage focus off the defense onto Devontae let Juju do the Randall Cobb thing and Randall Cobb back in 2014 when he was the two there 130 targets 90 catches 1300 yards 12 touchdowns so again Green Bay is by far and away the best case scenario for a dude like Juju and as it probably is for anyone that catches passes for a living because the guy that would be throwing them passes for a living is pretty damn fucking good so Juju could wind up in New York, he could wind up 
with the Washington football team because they might just pay him a shitload of money to be the number two to Terry McLaurin. With him gone, like I love Deontay. I love I love both of them. Both top 20 dynasty wide receivers for me. Deontay is, is the one for me. If I want one of those guys, it's Deontay. He's proven that he could do. The only number people are just going to continuously bring up are the yards per target. I understand he had a little bit of a drop issue this year. It's probably a little bit more than a little bit. But Deontay is as pure of a route runner as they come. Chase Claypool, awesome on the outside too. Just a monster wide receiver one possession. I think both of those guys can be top 24, top 20, top 18, top 15, flirtish wide receiver numbers for a few years to come, man. And Deontay Johnson was a baller this year. I don't want to get fuck you with your yards per target bullshit ass numbers. Kenny Galladay. Now, Kenny Galladay, the reason that they let Matt Stafford walk was apparently it was like a mutual respect thing. Like they knew they were rebuilding over the next three or four years. And they're like, Matt Stafford, you've done enough for this community. We're not going to have you be part of that. We want to do this from the ground up. We're going to let you walk. What does that mean for Kenny Galladay? I would imagine they're a little less nice, if I were to put it, with Kenny Galladay because whoever they're building around is going to need weapons. Because Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones are both out the fucking door whoever this rookie quarterback is that's coming in to build from the ground up gonna have trouble and you don't want these confidence issues with these young quarterbacks off the rip because it could be a long-term problem so they have the possibility of you know Kenny Galladay basically didn't play this year I think most of it had to do with the fact that he just didn't want to get hurt because he was on a contract here they could franchise tag him again which is a very very likely outcome for this scenario Marvin Jones is a free agent like I said I'd be very surprised if he was back in Detroit they have almost like nothing at wide receiver behind Marvin Jones. They got some flashes from the rookie Quintez Cephas, but like, you know, maybe they want to give him a bigger role in year two. Hawkinson, obviously, is starting to ascend as the tight end that they drafted him as the top top 10 kind of guy. You have DeAndre Swift, who's a fantastic pass catcher out of the backfield. But if they let Galladay go, like, they are going to have a really, 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 really gaping, disgusting porn type gaping hole at the wide receiver position. And that's not what you want for, for an incoming quarterback. So we've heard a lot of a lot of hype around um, Kenny Galladay to the Giants, right? I talk about Allen Robinson possibly being the wide receiver one possession guy. I think the same thing kind of goes for a guy like Kenny Galladay. So these teams that are in line for this like secure wide receiver one possession guy, Galladay, Allen Robinson should be on the top of there. Next up, Will Fuller. Do the Texans go out there and let their top dog at wide receiver leave? in bike to bike off seasons man it is it is very possible so the question becomes like does the currently worst run nfl franchise tell themselves to hold a beer now i drafted fuller in a few spots this year in fantasy but to be honest i never imagined that he would do what he did replacing deandre hopkins's statistics to a near like 90 to 95 percent level on pace for nearly 1300 yards 12 touchdowns in 2021 before that suspension now the outcome here for will fuller admittedly is very 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 wide obviously he's got the injury concerns to begin with right like he can't stay on the field so that's probably top of mind for the houston texans who are like if we are in the market for wide receiver one we want one that could be on the field and actually operate as our wide receiver one he finally stayed on the field for the most part this year until he got popped with the ped suspension which begs the question was he on the field because he was taking peds most likely him missing a game like next year one or two games whatever the start of the season is is not going to play into like a long-term contract for a team but i think it maybe speaks to the big the bigger picture uh, of the long-term contract and it's just noteworthy that he's missing time with suspension he's, he's missing time with injuries and shit like that now deshaun watson wants out of houston very 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 likely that he is not suiting up for the houston texans come 2021 and it doesn't seem like will Fuller, fuller's contract is going to play into that like if they resign fuller i don't think that makes watson want to stay there anymore i think he just understands that this is so poorly run they don't have any hope for the future because they're gambling away all their fucking picks and bill o'brien just put them in such a bad hole and they didn't give it, it doesn't fucking matter at this point but will fuller man you're going to want to max out a deal right when you're on your second contract like this is the time where you're coming off of big seasons or you're coming off of a few big seasons in a row where you've shown potential some team out there one of the 32 teams is going to send a fatty your way and i know this is the most like publicy landing spot all the fucking fish want him to go here but green bay also makes a lot a lot a lot of sense for will fuller because you have Devonte adams who's that pure number one possession route runner just incredible on every part of the field let someone else stretch the field. I know we've seen some things from MVS. We've seen some things from Alan Lazard. But imagine all those balls that MVS got this year that he was fucking dropping 50 yards down the field. Man, Will Fuller. Will Fuller. Both of these dudes, 
I mean, him and Devontae Adams actually might come on for 3,000 yards if they play on the same field with Aaron Rodgers next year. If Fuller is back in Houston with Watson under center, he'll be a very high-end wide receiver too. That's what he basically did all year, if not low-end wide receiver one numbers. But I think he'll go too high in fantasy drafts. I think people will start to draft him where his production was, which given the risk of him being and staying on the field, a little too high for me. So I could see him probably flirting with like mid to back-end wide receiver, or uh, round three ADP come next year for fantasy football if he stays in Houston and if Deshaun Watson stays in Houston. But again, that will probably be a little bit too rich for my taste if it's without Watson. You know, even if they pull off something like Watson for, you know, we've heard like Tua and a couple of draft picks or whatever. If Tua's there, then if there's another quarterback under center in Houston with Will Fuller there, it's going to be a problem. And he's going to be much more of a high risk, high reward, like fifth, sixth round pick that I will probably be staying away from he makes his money downfield and Watson is fucking gorgeous delivering it right into his bread basket so again we'll make another free agent video when all these guys actually land in their spots and talk about what the fantasy impact of that is next up we got Curtis Curtis Samuel that's a great name to fucking play on right there Curtis Samuel I'd fuck around with that if I was doing like a phone call with someone and they've never actually heard me me pronounce my name the problem with the free agent signing of Curtis Samuel is that Curtis Samuel is gonna get signed based on the Curtis Samuel production this year because Carolina used Curtis Samuel like Curtis Samuel should be used. And the new team is going to sign Curtis Samuel's 2020 Curtis Samuel production based on the production and probably fail to use Curtis Samuel like Carolina used Curtis Samuel, which is as Curtis Samuel should be used. Hashtag Curtis motherfucking Samuel. Okay, that's going to be the problem with a gadget guy like this. It seems like most things need to break right perfectly in order for their fantasy production to hit their fantasy value could still be a very good free agent signing and be a good NFL player. But I'm a little bit nervous that, you know, coming off this top 24, top 25 fantasy season is going to be tough to replicate because he was used so versatilely, versatility versatility finally broke out last year of his rookie contract he was he was a popular breakout pick for like seven summers in a row joe brady came in again used him to perfection he went over 1050 total yards 15 games 41 rushing attempts he finishes the year week 16 5 for 107 through the air 7 for 52 on the ground week 17 11 targets 7 catches 118 receiving yards man it, it was it was a tear at the end it was a tear like fat dudes in jeans man Curtis Samuel did his thing at the end of the season he's playing second field with Robbie Anderson DJ Moore we never really got to see what he would be now if he doesn't again land in a place like where Joe Brady would use him we'll probably see him revert to year three Curtis Samuel now Samuel in in, in Sam Fran would be fucking interesting because you got guys like Debo you got guys like Brandon Ayuk you got Georgie Kittle and that would mean that a dude like Jimmy G literally doesn't have to throw the ball past the line of scrimmage I would leave Kyle Shanahan chomping at the bit like oh we could do another year of not have to say some shit about how Jimmy G fucking stinks and he could still be okay and probably lead us to a bunch of dubs because the rest of these playmakers can make plays Curtis Samuel is one of those dudes that would fit in beautifully there but like at what point are you just getting redundant with all the players players on the field there with Debo and like that I feel like that would just be more stressful for for Kyle Shanahan like having to create plays for players and more plays for more players like I don't know that shit's a little crazy but I, I would be excited about that landing spot Curtis Samuel could wind up in a lot of spots like he'll probably be the one that goes to the Washington football team and just absolutely gets destroyed in terms of his value so he's exciting because he's coming off a big year good gadget player but I'm a little bit nervous about his fantasy risk so dynasty he's a guy that I might be looking to sell high if I could based on this year Corey Davis man it's the Titans got to be wanting to fucking jump off the upper deck after not signing him to that fifth year letting him walk off or having to re-sign him for a lot more money he is the perfect number two option to like not get attention not get a lot of defensive tension because you got AJB and you got Derrick Henry fucking running him up without being the center of attention like he's a good possession receiver and he doesn't really have to do a lot of shit on the field in order to be good it's his fourth year in the league we would have seen him top 70 for a thousand had he played in 16 games but he only played in 14 games we saw a few Corey Davis games he had three separate games of zero catches zero yards but that's what you're gonna get he's not an elite wide receiver he shouldn't be one of the top free agents signed this year but some team is probably gonna pay him decent money he went over 100 receiving yards this year five times there were five wide receivers that had more games of 100 yard receiving games than Corey Davis it was Ridley it was Diggs, it was Adams, it was D-Hop, and it was Justin Jefferson. Corey Davis finished 8th in yards per target, 4th in yards per out run. A.J. Brown was one spot ahead of him in yards per out run. That play-action offense, man, 
gorgeous. Shout out to Arthur Smith. Shout out to the future of the Atlanta Falcons. The worst situation for Davis would be signing somewhere as the wide receiver one. But like, if you're trying to get your money, that's where you're going to be signing as. And he's going to start getting the cornerback ones on the flip side and ain't going to work out. But the Titans should just say, fuck it. It's a sunk, sunk cost. We fucked up. Let's re-sign him to a two, three-year deal and see what we can max out with this offense under Tannehill. You see maybe Washington get into the mix here. I wouldn't be surprised if like Las Vegas did some stupid shit and signed Corey Davis to a fat deal. Like five years, 92 mil. Who says no? Won't change much in, in the Tennessee offense, to be honest with you. They could probably replace his production with something not too difficult. Mm, Henry's going to get his. A.J. Brown's going to get his. I, not, not much change in Tennessee, in my opinion. We've got T.Y. Hilton. Like he officially retired, so it would have made sense, I think, for them to to bring back T.Y. Hilton. But the fact that they, they're probably going to go after Stafford really hard, I, I think they're not in rebuild mode right now. Having a vet like T.Y. Hilton stay on the team makes a little bit of a sense. But if he's going to try to command like two or three year deal, I doubt they do that for him. Maybe they, they, they give him one more stab at this thing. He, he started to play well over the second half of the year. I don't know. He'll have to go to a contender or something. I'm not really excited about T.Y. Hilton. His dynasty days are are behind him. Then we got Marvin Jones, man. He ain't coming back to Detroit, but there's actually two landing spots that I would love for, for Marvin Jones. One would be Cleveland. Richard Higgins is a free agent, and Marvin Jones is basically like an upgraded version of Richard Higgins. Now we've got Odell Beckham coming off the injury. We've got Jarvis Landry is obviously like an underneath slot receiver, but I think Marvin Jones adds like a nice dynamic to this offense. That would be like a put you over the top kind of piece for this offense to get to the next step on the NFL level, right? Like Marvin Jones not going to be your wide receiver one. He's not going to command cornerback one type coverage, but he's like a very good football player still, as we just saw in this previous year. I think he could be a really good signing for Cleveland. And like he can finish his career kind of competing for a chip, right? Cleveland's like in the right place. They're young. They have good youth. They have a great young head coach who's putting them on the up and up. So he gets to be in a, in a spot to actually compete for like the first time in his career. It's a good fit, which means it definitely probably won't happen. But I do like, I do like a fit in Baltimore. Baltimore is going to do some dumb shit. They're going to do some dumb shit and probably sign like Sammy Watkins. How much sense does Marvin Jones to Baltimore make? You got Hollywood on the outside running deep routes. You got Duvernay on the inside running slots and Mark Andrews kind of spread in the middle of the seam over there. Let him get a two-year deal and play out Lamar Jackson's rookie deal, even though they're probably going to sign him to extension, but not the point. Marvin Jones in Baltimore. Again, like none of these spots really get me excited for fantasy because there's going to be other playmakers in the offense that kind of take a lot away from him. But from a real life perspective, I think Marvin Jones to Baltimore makes so much damn sense. Then you got Sammy Watkins, who who's just not good at football. He's just not good at football. He's literally like the frozen yogurt of ice cream. Like I would literally rather have regular yogurt or regular ice cream, but like you're going to eat the frozen yogurt you're going to settle for Sammy Watkins because otherwise you're just not going to get ice cream that night. That's what I imagine. Like me, this is the only the only time you'll ever be to be able to compare yourself to Patrick Mahomes. Like that's what Patrick Mahomes got to be feeling like when he's on the field and you got half baked and you've got cookie dough and Oreos and peanut butter and all the fucking great ice cream flavors of Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey running down the field. And then you got to look at dumbass frozen yogurt Sammy Watkins like that's what I feel like going to the fridge sometimes but like Watkins I don't know I really don't care with like, how much better of a of a place could you have been in than Patrick Mahomes and being the wide receiver two unencumbered they were just like we're just gonna let you run 90% snap rate for three years with Patrick Mahomes and you still stink he stinks he's just not good I'm sorry Nelson Aguilar though was good this year. I feel like he might re-sign with Las Vegas because this is like one of Gruden's moves and he's going to feel like he's going to be he's going to be like Animal where he's like really not sharp at all but he feels sharp because he made like one sharp play and then he'll keep harping on that one sharp play and like Aguilar is that guy he brought him in he had a really good year and now he's going to be like I told you I was right about it let's like re-sign him which is going to be bad news for Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards. I hope Nelson Aguilar is not in Las Vegas somewhere. I hope he gets fucking re-signed for Philadelphia or some shit. I hope I hope he goes to like Jacksonville. I don't know. Just get them in the fuck out of Las Vegas so Brian Edwards can finally pop off and do something, something like we expected him to do. Nelson Aguilar might resign with LV though. Um, if that's the case, it, it fucks everything up, man. I, I still think Brian Edwards is a buy. Henry Ruggs, like, I, uh, I just, I still think Henry Ruggs is fine, but this is the issue I echoed last offseason or last rookie season is that I liked Henry Ruggs, but I'm nervous that they're going to use him as a deep guy. And that's what they did, man. They didn't use him at the line of scrimmage. They didn't use him on slants. They didn't let him be explosive with the ball in his hands. They only let him be explosive and then tried to get the ball in his hands. Like, he's not Deshaun Jackson. That's not the type of player he is. And they tried to pinhole him into that role. And I hate that. I hate that for him, man. And I hate that for fucking Nelson Aguilar. I hate that for everybody involved. So Nelson Aguilar, I hope you're not with LV anymore. He could land as like, I mean, maybe Nelson Aguilar to Tennessee to replace Corey Davis. But if you're going to resign him, you might as well just fucking resign Corey Davis for probably less money. Rashad Perriman was on a one-year deal and he definitely had some good games. He like hit like a kind of hot streak for like four games in the middle of the season. But I do wonder what kind of season Rashad Perriman would have had if he didn't get hurt or if he weren't on the fucking Jets because he looked good at times and he started the year off hurt. His catchable target rate rate 103rd in the NFL. He was a good downfield threat, but I could see a team like the Jaguars signing Rashad Perriman. They have Chris Conley on the way out because he's a free agent. 
I mean, that would be like basically an identical loss of a piece, replacing it with a better. It, it was like it was like you're doing a puzzle, and that piece maybe you spilled like some tequila on it or some shit, and it's starting to rot away, and the and the corners are like chipping a little bit, and you're like, oh, this I want to hang this puzzle up right now, but like it looks like shit because that one little piece on there. That's Chris Conley in a puzzle. You throw that piece out, and for some reason, the manufacturer knew which piece you needed, and they're like, we're gonna ship it out to you and make your life easy. Here's fucking Brashad Perriman. Throw him into your Brashad puzzle Perriman. We're gonna throw him in, and he's gonna be a perfect replacement for Chris Conley. I don't think he's ever going to be the centerpiece of that offense because you got DJ Chark, got LaVisca Chenault. You're going to have Trevor Lawrence. They're going to sign somebody in for agency at the tight end position. You've got James Robinson. Things are going to look good if Rashad Perriman is your wide receiver three. I think that's the kind of stuff that they're going to do in Jacksonville. They're going to get a solidified wide receiver three. They're going to get a solidified tight end because they got all the cap space in the world and they're about to get Trevor motherfucking Lawrence. So this offense could be could be something nice in 2020, 2021. So I could see Brashad Perriman going there. I could see him, you know, I wouldn't like Brashad Perriman's a guy that any NFL team should be like semi happy signing because he's just like a, a role player that will make big plays. He knows his exact role. He plays that role well. Shot Perman's one to kind of keep an eye on. There. I think Jacksonville makes some sense though. Some guys that don't matter, but like kind of will for other people. We look at Willie Sneed. Willie Sneed's a free agent. This gets Duver- Duvernay on the field, and he's a guy that went primarily in like third round of rookie draft. So some guys invested a little bit of capital into him. And I think he played well this year on special teams, had some big plays in the wide receiver position, but I'm, I'm excited to see him get a little bit more of an expanded role. Larry Fitzgerald, I don't, I, I literally, since I started making dynasty videos like four off seasons ago, I've been talking about how Larry Fitz is going to leave. And this is Christian Kirk's job. Now I, I'm not even going to waste my time talking about it. Josh Reynolds, free agent. Does that open up some stuff for Van Jefferson? I feel like Van Jefferson got some hype early on second round pick absolutely dudded out in the middle of the season. Then he got a little bit of hype towards the end. He was getting some targets down, down the stretch they clearly want to use them they use some good draft capital on them so you know i guess this is a little bit of an opportunity for van jefferson to gain some value demarcus robinson listen demarcus robinson free agent sammy watkins free agent like miko hardman like i there were so many breakout reports of Miko Hardman this summer. My stance was the same on Miko throughout the whole summer. It was like he never surpassed Sammy Watkins, nor did he surpass Demarcus Robinson in playtime during his rookie year. So for us to just think that that's going to automatically happen in his second year without having any practice reports to go off of, without seeing any preseason games, and just expecting him to be the wide receiver too, at the, his rookie season went by and he got less and less playtime as the year went by. Two years in now, we've seen two years of him continuing to be the wide receiver four. Second round draft capital, he never surpassed DeMarcus Robinson. He never surpassed Sammy Watkins. With those guys out the door, though, obviously going to play a little a little bit more of a role. He just, he's not going to have the ceiling that I think a lot of people think he might have with more opportunity. Ceiling comes from talent, man. Ceiling doesn't come from opportunity. Opportunity comes from opportunity. Floor comes from opportunity. But ceiling, like Miko Hardman being the Tyreek Hill or whatever in that offense, it ain't going to happen. So I would be surprised if they don't somehow go with a more possession type receiver to play that Sammy Watkins role, combat Tyreek Hill's explosive ability, some shit like that. So I'm not getting super high on Miko Hardman. I don't think this is a huge buy window. He's still raw. He's got a lot of work to do as we saw in the playoffs, as we continue to see in the playoffs. But I don't know. I just figured I'd fucking throw his name out there. That's pretty much everyone I had on the list. I think I had a couple other guys on the bottom that I didn't get into. Uh, Tim Patrick. Oh, AJ Green, Tim Patrick, John Ross. I mean, AJ Green, like, I've been telling you, stop fucking drafting him for three years now. I don't know when you guys are going to listen. Tim Patrick, I like Tim Patrick a lot as a player. He's 27 years old. If Tim Patrick goes somewhere as, like, a number two possession guy, that would be exciting for me. Again, I don't think he's got, like, a ceiling because he's Tim Patrick, but, like, more from, like, an NFL standpoint, I like that. And John Ross, I mean, top 10 pick, 25 years old, blazing speed. These type of players rarely work out where they're undersized and really, really fast. But uh, John Ross, is, his, his time is obviously coming on in Cincinnati. So maybe he, he lands somewhere kind of exciting. So he might be a guy that's on the end of your dynasty roster that you're debating just dropping for roster space for your rookie drafts or whatever because you got to drop guys usually for that. I, I I'll hold on to him, see where he signs in free agency before you make any unjust moves that you can't take. Bye. All right. Well, that is the wide receiver free agency wrap up again. We are going to do all this shit over again, but I'll probably make it one video this time rather than fucking extending it for a whole whole last month. We will recap everything when these players land and talk about their new values and talk about the guys that are replacing the guys moving in their current teams and whatever, whatever, whatever. So if you haven't checked out the running back piece, the running back video, the quarterback tight end videos, again, those will be linked down below. Find them on my YouTube page. Make sure you're subscribed so you can see everything that we're doing for the next X number of years, months, deaths, days, people, lives, fucking whatever. That's it. So hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed, and I will see y'all on Fade the Public tomorrow. Love y'all.